Good afternoon, AI fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are coming to the conclusion of our three days of coverage here on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with my fellow favorite co nerd, John Furrier. Yeah. John, this show is so fun. You know, we've three years we've been here, the, um, and the number one thing has always been more performance, but the big issues with AI is space on the floor in the data center and power and cooling. You see power and cooling, but you can power and the cooling kind of like they're breaking out a little bit. So this segment is going to be great. Uh, Dell's done some amazing things and the new rack with OCP compliance been phenomenal. The booth's been buzzing, so we can't wait. Yeah, to get into we one. got some cool things can't going wait on. To get into this conversation. And who better to tell us all about them than Tim? Tim, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. Yeah. It's been a busy show for you. You're a yeah. popular man. Yes, indeed. <laughs> These days, it's our time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> it is your time to shine. Lots of things shining about the Dell AI factory. You lead the thermal strategy over there. And I think this is, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because the amount of things that go into thermal strategy is only getting more and more complex. So how do you go about that? How is Dell thinking about that? Yeah, it's a great question. So up until recently, even you know a few years ago, we were looking at scaling out and we we're definitely looking at HPC and AI, we were doing that, but we we're talking about 50, 60 kilowatts a rack, 19 inch racks, you know, doing the whole power, PDU, PSU, juggling, but uh, cooling was just making sure we could keep things calm, right? Um, mm -hmm. About, you know, two to three years ago, um, we were looking to the future and saying, hey, this is literally going to get hot. This is going to be something where we're- Pun intended. Need, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need to plan on putting a whole bunch of accelerators together so that we can actually do the high speed networking to make that happen. But when I put a whole bunch of accelerators together, that is putting a whole bunch of heat in one place. And it's really that density that is the challenge. That's the but that simultaneously addressed a couple of things that you brought up. It also means we can do more in less space, which is good for the data center. And it means that um, we need to think about how to deliver that as a unit so that it's not complex for the customer to deploy and be able to ideally just drop that on the data center floor, connect power, connect cooling, and the customer's making money. That's our goal, is get them. That sounds wonderfully simplified. Working. That's, that's <laughs> absolutely I love that. what we're trying to do. <laughs> that's <laughs> AI factory to me. That's right. The AI factory is a great branding because it simplifies kind of the concept. It's not just a server anymore. It's a bunch of things together as a system. And I think that's what we're seeing with this show has turned into, it's, it's a system show now. Uh, and the game is clear. Productivity, AI apps, and agents are coming, agentic systems, agentic infrastructure. So as the infrastructure creates these new layers, new software is emerging. And that's really where this advancement is going to really kind of move the needle again. So even next year, I'm sure we'll see, and we've heard on theCUBE, Savannah, and many guests saying, it's the next software that's yet to be written. Today's been leveled up with AI, now we have the next level coming. Indeed, and that it brings up a really important point. So today we are, as you saw, we, we to our knowledge, have the first enterprise or RV3 deployment that's going to allow us to give a lot of density, but another thing that it does is we've created a multi-generational hardware platform because what you're mentioning is what's coming next, right? And we wanted to be ready for that today so that rack infrastructure is designed today for you know 120 kilowatts. We've already got customers for 220 kilowatt racks, but we knew we needed to get to a half megawatt. Yeah. So how do we do that? How do we design the power and cooling to allow that one platform to be flexible enough for our customers to be able to update to the next and next and next GPUs uh, and software and networking and everything that needs to go in there. You know, one point that wasn't really amplified because it was pretty obvious just on the rack itself but when we did the booth analysis was it's OCP compliant. For open um, compute project, which week the cube was there when it kicked off, that was the beginning of the open source of the infrastructure. And open standards mm -hmm. was one of the top things. You're seeing it with ethernet, you're seeing it with the modularity that customers want in a heterogeneous environment. They want to have interoperability and integration. Now that Gen AI is not just connecting systems, but data is transferring. So all that's together. So like open is a huge part. Take us through the mindset at Dell. Dell's always been open. I mean, us open systems has been, Intel has been a <laughs> industry compatible machines. 
But this is where it gets really scalable. Take you, what's the thoughts there on the engineering side, strategy with Dell? Take us through the, the why open is such a big deal and what it means for the customer. Sure, lots of questions there. So um, <laughs> this ties back to the first well, question. Well, we're sitting next to John Furrier. <laughs> yeah, the, about thermal strategy. Our strategy is to make it easy for our customers to deploy the compute they need sure. to run their businesses, right? So when we're talking about uh, looking at ORV3 and the OCP standards, they're great, but we need to, and so we have, we've adopted like we call the payload area. You can put any OCP compliant server in there that'll fit, it'll get powered. Um, but we needed to go a step beyond that. We needed to make sure that there was liquid cooling that was also standard. And that's something we were the first to our knowledge to put the OCP standard liquid connectors on there. So that that's a standard interface for cooling as well as the OCP standard power, right? But, but the standard was kind of thinking about 17 kilowatt racks, 30 kilowatt racks, not 200 kilowatt racks. Big so, difference there. Yeah, so we needed to make the rack a bit deeper. We went from 1,000 millimeters or a meter deep to 1.2 meters deep and a little wider from 600 millimeters to 750 millimeters. But what that gives us is the ability to really put the network cabling in for all these dense AI racks, bring the power in the rear to be able to get to those high uh, power densities. All of this translates to a platform that is flexible, that will enable our customers to grow with that platform. And it also creates a package that we can pre-integrate for customers, deliver on site, as I said, connect power and cooling, and you're up and running. Just out of the box. Yes. It's a little harder than that, but... You're making it sound so so simple, though. I, th I think that's... Uh, inspiring and enlightening. It's essentially pro providing a platform for agile innovation, depending on what the customer's needs might be. How, you've got a lot of different partners, a lot of different players in this game. How, I, I'm just thinking about, it must be pretty complex to figure out how to create a solution that goes like this. What's the, what's the development cycle like? How long is it taking you and the team to come up with this next generation? So, next, till next. I'm not sure I can put an easy number on that. We've been working with OCP, as you noted, for a long time. And, and one of the core concepts here was DCMHS, the Data Center Modular Hardware System. What that does is that was partnering with silicon providers, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, to say, we want a common platform that we can drop in your processors, not this year, but five years from now, into this platform. That was key. So we've been working on that and been a leader in that. Also, on you know, jumping to cooling, those connectors, super important. We have one of my colleagues is a co-chair of that committee in OCP. So, and then that means working with all the fittings manufacturers, working with the cooling suppliers, working with power supply suppliers. So you're, you're exactly right. It's a whole lot of folks that are involved in this. And this really, you know, really comes together in a, in a couple of years. It's not six months, right? But now well, it would have to, there's a lot going on there. But yeah. now that we've designed a platform and thought about things, for instance, like this, we want this platform uh, to be flexible and so that we don't have to spend a couple of years every time, right? Mm -hmm. And so until now, if you look at a supercomputer, you look at Frontier, you look at El Capitan, they're great, amazing piece of engineering, but they're, they're custom made. They're basically one-offs. Yeah. And no, if the, that's not a negative statement. It's a statement of fact because they needed to do something to fit that in. But you know what? That doesn't meet our needs to have a platform that can go from supercomputing to the to the neighborhood bank, uh, you know, uh, bank branch. And so what we said is we want a platform that I can put a two processor server in. I can put an eight GPU server in. It gets the right cooling automatically. <laughs> on to think about it. So we've engineered, you know, among other things, that this is an example, we've engineered what we call impedance match servers. So no matter what you put in there, whether you put it in today, or you put it in six years from now, it's going to get the cooling it needs automatically. Don't have to think about it. Don't have to tweak the cooling system. It just works. It's that sort of forethought that's gone in that is going to allow us to be much more agile moving forward. It's not going to be a two-year cycle because as you've seen, as we all see, um, we're not on two-year silicon cycles anymore. We're on 
maybe no, we what is it? Nine months? About the, exactly. Sure. Yeah. Six to nine months. The speed of hardware innovation is totally entering a new yeah. arena and era. And I, yeah, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. So we'll be able to to grow together. What are, what are the biggest challenges in the cooling of these larger systems and more powerful systems? Yeah, so it's the challenge is, challenge is to balance the high power, which requires really innovative cooling with the uh, configurability and flexibility that we know our customers need. Again, we're trying to address customers from universities all the way to the largest supercomputers in the world. Yeah, and so governments, universities, exactly. enterprise, so everybody needs stuff. We've taken an approach that's a little different than some. We've, we've, we're growing the amount of the computer that is liquid cooled, but we have to leave some parts open to air so that we can quickly service it, so we can allow the customer to, to change up, say, oh, we're, we need to change networks for some reason. We're gonna change all of our NICs. That's easy to do in our systems. But that also means that we're we're not just innovating in what's you know the the big oh, to, big piece of this show is liquid cooling and and it's very awesome I, I love it but we have to innovate on air cooling too and we're doing that and that that means rethinking we don't want more fans in there we don't want more noise how can we use the air that's flowing through there now to to cool better and so we're gonna you're gonna see some uh, some innovations coming out from Dell early next year that'll show how we can out use the same amount of air or even less to pull higher power devices to get us there, to allow us that How do you do that? It comes down to physics. It comes down to- Yeah, well, really I want to know the physics. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. It's trying to speed of light. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right, I know this gravitational to force the, is gonna go a different direction. I mean, we got the doctor in the house. I want to say, I mean, can you explain that? I'm curious. So to, to some extent, some extent, we've got to wait till we, we can show it, uh, show it off altogether. Oh, come on, Tim. I thought we were going down the right path there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a matter of, of really getting in there and understanding the physics of heat transfer. How do we, how does heat get into the air? How do we move it out efficiently? And um, then saying, well, how can we do that without complicating the system, adding yeah. complexity and, and more service calls? Bad thing, right? We don't want to add cost. Right, so uh, and so we have some really creative people, and uh, it's been really fun to work with. I mean, it's in a lot of engineering in these areas. So, I can't wait to get work. this physics lesson when you have to talk about it, because now I'm super curious. I'm gonna have to go do some research. Well, I mean, this is the I mean, ever, this is the show. You're seeing that uh, this is a show where you got to have the proof, the sizzle and the steak, as they say. And, and the three areas we mentioned, there's real engineering going on. Open up the the Dell. Um, playbook there and what you guys have done. I know you guys have worked hard. We've been covering Dell over these past three years. Um, you, Dell and your partners like Broadcom and others have been really engineering for those three areas, space, power, and cooling, and price performance. I mean, that's the three areas that where engineering's got to get done to solve those problems. What's some of the things that you can share inside Dell that's uh, that you're excited about or you, you hope to share? Yeah, absolutely. So that is absolutely our focus. We know that that's what, what wins business, as well as uh, Dell's ability to, to provide long-term service and support. We hear that all the time. And they, they like our computers, but they love our relationship, right? So that's, I'm gonna just put that out there. Um, the other thing is listening to the customer and understanding their needs. They're telling us, we want this computer. Yeah. It's no mystery that power is hard to come by. And right now in many data centers, yes. power is consuming 40, 50% of, I'm sorry, cooling is consuming 40 to 50% of the power coming in. So we're working on technology. That's well, really kind of significant. Yeah, that's yeah. Huge. To, to cut yeah. that down, comes back to value. How can we provide value to the customers, make sure that our gear has the lowest total cost of, op, of ownership? And that includes things like um, something that we've hinted at here, we're, we're gonna have an announcement next year where we're going to provide 100% cooling to very warm water, say 90 to 95 F water. Whoa. Collect all of the heat in our 500 kilowatt rack. That, that allows most of our customers to remove chillers altogether from their systems, um, wherever you are in the world. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. That cuts that 50% number down to about 10%. Wow, that's a huge gain. So, yeah. Huge gain. And that, yeah. that is directly related to our customers' bottom line, and that's what we're all about. Yeah, and they're going to get also a top line benefit with the Gen AI uh, way exactly. because there's enough low hanging fruit workloads that are going to get the Gen AI infusion, correct? Right. speak. Exactly. And, but real important, that doesn't come cheap, right? Yeah. Right? So these yeah. racks, 
when I not going to talk about exact numbers, but we've all heard they're expensive. You're such a tease, Tim. They, they buy them, you know, they buy them in bunches too. Is uh, you have the big boxes, the servers, which are you get the air cooled one, you get the liquid cooled ones. So now, but they have they, because they got the GPUs, you need a couple of them. Right. Yeah, and and you need time together. And the key thing is, if you're spending, let's just throw out a number. If you're spending three million dollars for a rack, you want that to start generating revenue as soon as you can. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have time. Uh, yeah. You don't want to wait for the cooling to get hooked up. You don't want to wait for the product to get hooked up. So, again, a, a long a, a part of our focus within Dell is enabling that fastest time to deploy. Yeah. It's not just getting to market. It's making sure the customer can actually use it yeah. at, as soon as possible after they paid for it. Because yeah. they've got to start ticking. Because when's the next processor coming out? Yeah. It's not, yeah. again, it's not two years from now. It's nine to 12 months from now. They need to be yeah. recouping that, that value. Hey, the transformation is happening. Savannah and I were just talking about it. We briefly talked about it before we came on camera about the CFO that are being pulled yeah. in. Because it's not just a capital budgeting exercise. Hey, I need another server. Or, you know, this is a, like a big system. And it's a big purchase. And now you have other criteria. I might use a GPU cloud with this rack. or And so now CFO's got to get into this because it's not it's a technical changing of the business model to your point about getting that value fast with Gen AI. So the, a whole nother TCO calculation gets made out. You got to figure out risk management. If I'm going to use a compute as a service, I got a CapEx, I go, how am I? Uh, <laughs> this is like new first, first generation, new CFO problems that are opportunities. That's right. Yeah, so it's a whole shebang. Tim, I got a question for you. You've got 14 patents already. How many new patents are you going to get next year when you release all of this stuff you're teasing us with? Um, <laughs> it'll double or triple. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, we're, we're all working hard. That's not just me. I mean, that's the team. You yeah. Know, and, and we are, um, it, we're really proud of that, by the way, as, as, um, as Dell, as, as an engineering team, um, uh, our, our management has been bragging about the fact that, you know, we're climbing up those patent ranks. You're yeah. going to see us right in the very top um, you know, lists of, of uh, patent generating organizations. And that's just a testament to the innovation to meet the customer and gifts, right? It, we're not doing this for fun, right? I mean, it is fun. Yeah, absolutely. Not for the patent vanity. But it's not for the patent vanity <laughs> at all, right? It's, it's really that, hey, we've got to solve some problems. Yeah. And we've got to think about things in order to meet all of these requirements. We want to be agile, we want to be inexpensive, we want to be reliable, all these things. Okay, that's not something that's on the market today. How can we do that a little differently? Yeah. How can we look at the physics again, take another mm -hmm. angle at that? And uh, so, yeah. Well, as you said earlier, the engineer engineering wins business in because the, of solving these areas, what customers care about. And, mm -hmm. you know, the competition all saying they have best power cooling. So how would you talk about the competition? I mean, they're saying, well, we got this, we got the best. Everyone seems to have the best. Yeah, or they how do you are know? certainly marketing it how as you, that. How do you, that's how do you squint through the signal from the noise relative to all the hand waving around power and cooling? So um, there's a couple of statements on that. First, uh, there's a lot of, I've got colleagues at all of these places, right? They're all smart. And so um, oh, in the end, we, we just well, we that, we can. are focused on being real honest with our customers, real transparent. Um, telling them what they're getting. And the key thing really isn't necessarily to be the best, but to be able to deliver the value. And that isn't just the engineering, it's our sales staff that help get the systems there. And very importantly, it's our service organization that makes it happen and keeps it up so that they're making money all the time instead of down. So it's really, and that's something that Dell brings really uniquely as we have this worldwide service organization that can be there on the spot and deliver. Yeah. I'm so impressed. It's one of the things I've been most impressed about with Dell is, you know, it can take sometimes, like I said, a little bit of a, a runway to get going. Once they're going, we've got the systems to take care of the customers worldwide. And that's really the closer. That's really what the customers say. Hey, what? okay, price, features, yeah. It's on the bar park, but we like the service. We like that you are taking care of it. It's all about community building and making sure that, that your customers are happy and that that user experience is optimized. I've got one final question for you, Tim. And I realize you can't spill the beans on some of the secrets coming, but I suspect you can give me an answer to this question. 
When we're hanging out at Dell Tech World or at Supercomputing 2025 in St. Louis, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? Obviously within reason. <laughs> all right, so, I mean, I think, I think you're asking the same question uh, a little different way, that's all right. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're on to me or something. It's more, I, I, want, I want your prediction yeah. for the sizzle reel. So it doesn't have yeah. to be super technical. Um, I, I don't think it's a secret. I think you can expect to see a whole bunch more platforms coming out in our ORV3 platform. Um, you're going to see a stronger continuous strength in our 19 inch platforms. And you're going to see these energy saving um, technologies that I'm hinting at here. You're going to see those on the floor, um, you see us delivering. And um, I think you're just going to, it's going to become more evident to you and to the world just how complete a package Dell is delivering. It's not just a limited number of platforms, it's the whole spectrum for the whole spectrum of customers. And uh, again, the, the services and the software that enables it, that's continually growing. And I think what customers are gonna see is that's the package. It's not just the hardware and, and the service, but also we're continually building and aggressively building our, our software package to make it easy to deploy. And there will be some expanded um, offerings as well, so that there'll be, you'll see more pieces of the ecosystem with Dell badges. Um, love our partners, they're, they're great, um, but all those patents that's talking about, they're gonna start appearing in Dell badge products that may surprising. Well, I look forward to being surprised. Tim, thank you so much for making time on such a busy week for you. Shout out to your whole thermal team and you better you know, give us a call right away when you are allowed to talk about it because I know I speak for John and I when I say yeah, our curiosity want, is quite peaked. Yes, we want the data. Yes, we definitely want the data. And John, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you, thank you all for tuning in to our fabulous three days of coverage here at Supercomputing 2024. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.